Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Grace and peace, dear Northminster family. What a blessing and a joy it is to be gathered together across time and space and through technology to be able to worship God together at the beginning of the holiest of weeks on Palm Sunday, March 28th, 2021. It is truly a blessing to be able to be together in spirit as we worship God together. There's lots going on in the life of our congregation. You saw some announcements scrolling through at the beginning of the video that let you in on a whole bunch of things that are going on, ways in which you can be involved in the life and ongoing ministry of our congregation through uh, our Holy Week opportunities on Maundy Thursday and Good Friday and Easter Sunday, as well as ongoing ministry opportunities. Hope that you take the chance to either hit pause and go back and read through those announcements again or wait until the end of the worship service to read about the things that are going on in the life of our congregation. Friends, Lent has been a journey. It has been a journey of seeking sacred and cultivating connection. It has been a time, a set apart time, a time of journeying with Jesus towards Jerusalem and towards the cross. As we remember all of the acts and all that went into the holiest of weeks and Jesus' journey, we give thanks for the stories. We give thanks for the fellowship and all of the ways that we learn from the teachings of Jesus and internalize them and live with them and share them and act on them in our lives and in our relationships in everything that we say and everything that we do. So with joy in our hearts, as we begin this journey, let us turn our hearts and our minds to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Please join me in this morning's opening prayer. Holy God, we come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. We will journey through praise with joy on our lips, through betrayal and death, cradling hope deep in our hearts. We will follow Jesus as he leads us through this week, for Christ's is the life that we long for, the word who sustains us. We will wave branches in anticipation, offer cheers and celebration, we will lay down our love before him to cushion, to cushion his steps as he walks. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, Jesus has come, modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed are the builders of your beloved community, O oh God. Bless our worship and our journey throughout this holy week. Humbly we pray. Amen. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sing through pillared court and tent. The joyful anthem rang To Jesus who had blessed them Those folded to his breast The children sang their praises The simplest and the best From Olivet they followed Mid an exile crowd, the victor from branch waving, and 
and the chanting clear and loud. The Lord of earth and heaven rode on in a lowly state, nor scorned that little children showed on his bidding wait. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing, for Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of Him, our King. Oh, may we ever praise Him with heart and a life and a voice, and in His blissful presence eternally. As we begin this Holy Week, there are ways we are used to marking these sacred days. It would be easy for us to rely on past rituals, to look to liturgy and hymns and reflections to help us remember and reenact Palm Sunday and the Holy Week ahead. But what if Jesus arrived to invite us to really lay down something important to us to acknowledge his arrival? What if we knew that change was needed, necessary for God's beloved community to flourish? What confession are we called to make? What wisdom and discernment do we need? May we consider these questions in the presence of the Holy Spirit for a few moments in silence before we join our voices in this morning's prayer for confession and revelation. Let us pray. Holy God, our Messiah and Lord, we think we know Palm Sunday Jesus. It would be easy for us to wave branches, to sing and shout hosannas, to join in the parades and cheers to welcome you today. It would be just as easy for us to turn our backs to your teachings tomorrow, to go back to our own agendas and desires and later join the chorus of crowds calling for your downfall. It's easy for us to consider the ways our world needs change and easier still to leave it to others to make that change. We know the work needs to be done and we are tired. Holy Spirit, we pray for the wisdom, discernment and strength to get to work. Help us to see Jesus, to see how and where Jesus enters our world today and what we need to lay at his feet. Help us to welcome Jesus in the vulnerable and the powerful, in the addicts and the oppressors, in those with whom we agree and those who we do not even try to understand. Forgive us our apathy and inspire us to the work of sharing your radical hospitality with anyone and everyone in our midst. Journey with us through these sacred days as we cultivate connection with you and one another. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Sisters, brothers, siblings, and God's family, sacred is not bound by physical space or by descriptions someone else has defined. Connection is not measured by the number of texts or calls or social media friends. We find sacred through prayer, through presence, through experiencing God's peace. We cultivate connection through worship in all its forms. The beauty of God's abundant love and radical hospitality is that we have done nothing to deserve it, and we can do nothing to change it. We are forgiven from sin, freed from all that binds us, and we are able to rejoice in the power of God. Through Jesus, we are forgiven over and over again. Through Jesus, we receive God's love and are invited to share it with others. Through Jesus, we have life. Thanks be to God. Amen. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me 
to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. We experience God's peace when we are assured of God's presence or God's forgiveness or the revelations of the Holy Spirit. Knowing God's peace often inspires us to share God's peace. This is not a ritual reserved for Sunday mornings or spaces with pews and crosses and candles. It's not a tradition used for greetings or social practices. Sharing God's peace is an act of faith, a practice that embodies God's radical hospitality. In the cultivation of connection among God's peace, sharing peace is a sacred practice. It may come in the form of a greeting to those sharing your space right now, or a text, or an email, or a phone call. It may include the words, God's peace be with you. It may take the shape of a silent prayer offered on behalf of someone you know who needs a reminder of God's peace. May we take this opportunity to share in the sacred practice of sharing God's peace, cultivating connection with God's people in our midst. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not stop them. Hello, and as you can see, I'm out here with some very special people today. And we are out here in downtown Hickory picking up trash. And that's actually what I wanted to talk to you about today, picking up trash. Now, why are we out here picking up trash? Well, we realized that there was a lot of trash in downtown Hickory. There was a lot of stuff that needed to be cleaned up and, you know, Sometimes it just blows out of trash cans and it ends up on the side of the road. Sometimes people just can't make it to a trash can in time and they get tired. Sometimes maybe they just forget that they need to throw it in a trash can and it it ends up out here on the side of the road. And that that happens and it builds up over time and it's bad for the grass and it's bad for uh, how it looks around. And it just makes it feel better and makes us able to take care of the earth better if somebody goes and picks it up. And we realized that and we realized, hey, we've got hands. We can do this. We can pick up trash for the city and the people of Hickory. And what I wanted to talk to you about today especially is that 
we don't only do that just because it's something good to do. We do it because it's a way for all of us to show the love of Jesus. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? We talk about the love of Jesus a lot, and they don't really, we don't really mention picking up trash. We talk about how Jesus loves us enough to come to earth to teach us a bunch of good things about loving others, and we talk about all the miracles that Jesus did out of love for us, and all the things that he did with the disciples, and we talk about how Jesus died on the cross, and how Jesus, we're going to be talking about this a lot this week actually, how Jesus rose from the dead, and how Jesus is alive, and how Jesus is living now, and loving, and showing us that love all over the world, and all over the universe, and we can feel that love, and Jesus wants us to know it, and he wants everybody to know that Jesus loves them, and we can share that love with other people. We talked last week about how we're all connected with the air that we breathe. We're all connected when we share the love of Jesus with each other. And there are a lot of ways that that can look. Obviously, you can just be nice to somebody, and that's a way to show them the love of Jesus. Um, you can share with people. You can share your toys or your, your markers or crayons or anything else with people, and that's a way to show the love of Jesus. Sometimes showing the love of Jesus means wearing masks and making sure that we're protecting each other. We've talked about that too. And sometimes showing the love of Jesus can look like this, picking up trash. pretty neat, isn't it? That we can show the love of Jesus in so many different ways because the love of Jesus is so big and Jesus is so alive that there's all sorts of ways that we can look for to help other people and share that love with them. And so maybe picking up trash is something that you and your family can do to show the love of Jesus to our communities and to the people around us. Maybe it's something else entirely. I think that's a good idea for you and your family to talk about. How can you share that love of Jesus with other people this week? How can you show them that you love Jesus and that Jesus is alive and Jesus wants good and healthy things for all of us? All right. I know you're going to do a great job showing the love of Jesus. See you next week. Our scripture for this Palm Sunday comes from the Gospel of Mark, the 11th chapter, the first 11 verses. Let us listen for the word of God. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent off two of the disciples with this instruction. Go to the village straight ahead of you, and as soon as you enter it, you will find tethered there a colt on which no one has ridden. Untie it and bring it back. If anyone says to you, why are you doing that? Say, the rabbi needs it, but will send it back very soon. So they went off, and finding a colt tethered out on the street near a gate, they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What do you mean by untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them take it. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks across its back, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread leafy branches, which they then had cut from the fields. Everyone around Jesus, in front or in back of him, cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God! Blessed is the coming reign of our ancestor David! Hosanna in the highest! 
Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple precincts. He inspected everything there. But since it was already late in the afternoon, he went out to Bethany accompanied by the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our theme for the Lenten season this year has been seeking sacred and cultivating connection. We've tried to engage in a variety of practices to help with those quests. We've dug deep to find sacred not only in the beautiful spaces of our church sanctuaries or high up on mountaintops or near the water's edge, but everywhere, to find sacred everywhere we are and everywhere that we go. We've been working to make space for that sacred, for sanctuary, for safety and exploration and wholeness and hope in our physical spaces, as well as in our schedules and in our hearts and minds as well. Sanctuary is not a place. It's a mindset. Kind of like the way we say that the church isn't a building. It's a family. Sacred space involves worship, and we've been reflecting throughout the Lenten season on all of the myriad of ways in which we can define worship. Our scripture this morning, Mark's gospel account of the events of Palm Sunday, reminds us that Jesus brought sanctuary to the streets. The palm parade overrun with hosannas and screams of delight and cheer and coats and blankets thrown down to make the path and clear the way. All of that was sacred. It was holy. It was set apart. It was amazing. I've heard of others talk about Palm Sunday like it was a crowd cheering like the kinds that we hear at at sports events and football stadiums and basketball courts, the cheers and the camaraderie, all of a fandom for Jesus. It was an all-hands-on-deck, loud, celebratory party. There weren't special invitations for this party. There were no passwords or codes. There was nothing happening in silence behind closed doors. The welcome and the worship of Jesus happened loudly right there on the street for anyone and everyone to take part in. Jesus' parade through Jerusalem would end up at the temple. It would end up at that temple, the area that was perceived as sacred and also a place that was known to hold privilege and power. The party in the streets would move to a place where Jesus would go and he would upset the status quo and overturn the tables in the temple. A place where Jesus would teach and shed light on concepts like caring for the vulnerable and engaging in respectful discourse, building relationships and cultivating connection and preparing to celebrate sacred rituals around holy days like a Seder meal, recognizing the Passover that was just about to begin. Part of the beauty of the Palm Sunday story is the crowd, the involvement, the everyone and everything of it all. Anyone that was near or around Jerusalem was drawn in and invited to connect with what was happening. The fandom and the cheers, it all came together around Jesus, around the ideas that he carried, around the teachings of love and service, of faith and hope, of the most radical kind of hospitality. The parade wasn't bound by the temple walls. There were no dress codes. You didn't have to memorize anything in particular to cheer. There were no membership cards required. The crowds just celebrated. They cheered, they sang hosannas, they called down blessings on the one who was coming in the name of the Lord. People threw down their cloaks and their coats and their blankets from home to set this sacred path down for this blessed and beloved one to journey upon. They tossed their possessions out in earnest joy with urgency in support of this concept 
of abundant love and radical hospitality that was personified in Jesus. So today, we, we the followers of Jesus, we are invited to do the very same thing. We have this opportunity to celebrate, to cheer, to sing our hosannas, to give ourselves fully to this holy and sacred concept of abundant love and radical hospitality personified in Jesus. We have said before and we confess over and over and over again the ways in which we are made in God's image, the ways we bear God's essence, and so does everyone we meet. So as we hold on to that truth, we have to ask ourselves, for whom are we willing to throw down our cloaks? For whom are we willing to lay down our comfort and the things that keep us warm and tidy and safe? The Reverend Ashley Ann Masters is one of my heroes. She is a hospital chaplain and a college chaplain and a brilliant theologian. Recently, she shared a ritual that she practiced with her college students as they gathered very recently to hold vigil for the lives lost to gun violence in Atlanta and Philadelphia and Boulder. And I can only imagine the countless other places that experienced gun violence that did not make the national news headlines. She put into words what I imagine many of us are feeling. The questions we ask why preventable death like gun violence goes unanswered. The exhaustion that we feel from the grief of needless death. The empathy that we are working to practice for the Black and Indigenous, and Asian, and Pacific Islander, and all people of color, knowing that those of us who are white can only begin to try and grasp the stress that this violence has caused and continues to propagate. The lives that were lost bore God's image. The violence that has and continues to occur is sin. It is evil. To quote Reverend Masters, we rebuke the trauma and fear of death caused by white supremacy and racism that has resulted in this kind of violence. We rebuke it over and over and over again. And yet, here we are again. Followers of Jesus, we are seeking the sacred. We are called to make space for God's people. God's people who look like us and God's people who do not. God's people who agree with us and who think like us and God's people who do not. It is sacred and it is holy to speak up and to speak out about the violence in the world. We can't be silent about it. We can't be spectators anymore. Our social media posts and our promises of prayer are not enough. If we are going to follow Jesus through that parade, we've got to let go of our coats and the things that keep us warm and comfortable and lay them down. I think we're called to lay them down for the vulnerable and for the God image bearing siblings in God's family that are living in fear and oppression right now. We're called to lay down our comfort and our apathy in order to do justice. We're called to be uncomfortable, to protest, to speak up and act out, and to take the sacred worship that we celebrate to the streets and the courthouses and the temples and the sanctuaries and the places of power. We're called to use our power and our privilege in service of all of God's children, especially the vulnerable ones. Jesus rode into a broken world. And he rode straight to the seat of power and started shaking things up. The brokenness of that world revealed itself when the same people throwing down their cloaks and shouting their cheers in the hosannas turned on Jesus when their comfort was taken away, when their status quo was upset. The brokenness of that world lifted up an empire of oppression and Jesus died 
in that empire, in an execution by the state. Perhaps that brokenness is manifested now in things like the fact that there are still kids in cages on our southern border, in the countless lives that are lost to gun violence that could have been prevented, in the systemic racism that oppresses the lives of our siblings of color, in homelessness, in hunger, in addiction, in apathy, in affluence, in division, in enmity, in exhaustion. We have read the whole story. We know how this ends and we have the capacity to do differently. We have that capacity because we have Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit. We can follow Jesus to the places of power and privilege and join him in the table turning, in the upending of the status quo, in the doing of justice, in the work of liberating those who are oppressed in any way, shape, or form. That is holy. That is a connection cultivated with the one who created us. And that is a connection cultivated with those for whom we lay down our cloaks. That is sacred. It is not easy, but it is essential. With the power of the Holy Spirit to strengthen us and to guide us, we cannot wait any longer. The beloved community cannot wait any longer for the abundant love and radical hospitality that's personified in Jesus to be made known in us and through us for all of creation. May this be so. Amen.
affirmation of faith comes from the Confession of Belhar. This confession was written by clergy and concerned community members as a response to the situation of apartheid going on in South Africa. It was originally written in Afrikaans and adopted by the Synod of the Dutch Reformed Mission Church in South Africa in 1986. The confession has, has since been adopted by a number of Reformed faiths, both in the United States and across the globe. This inclusive language text was prepared by the Office of Theology and Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. The Confession of Belhar was adopted into the Presbyterian Church USA's Book of Confession by the 222nd General Assembly in 2016. Our affirmation this morning is adapted from the confessional language of the Confession of Belhar by Barbara Hedges Gotel. Let us together affirm our faith. Together we confess that God unites us in faith. Together we come to know the height and the breadth and the depth of the love of Christ. Together we are built up to the full stature of Christ. Together we know and bear one another's burdens. We admonish one another. We comfort one another. We suffer with one another. We need one another. We build up one another. Together we pray. Together we serve God in this world. Together we fight against all which may threaten or hinder this unity. Together we work to extend God's love and hospitality to the entirety of God's beloved community. Thanks be to God. Amen. Whatever process we may take to seek sacred or cultivate connection, God is with us. We give thanks for all the ways God's presence encourages, empowers, and inspires us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to care for one another and our community, often in creative ways. This care is made possible through our offerings of all kinds, offerings of resources, of time, of connection and relationship of prayer, promise, skill, talent, and even the whole of our very lives. We pray that you are able to see a glimpse of the power of your offerings this week, because whatever you offer, trust that God uses it, and all of our offerings are together more than the sum of their parts. If you are able to do so, continuing your financial pledges and contributions is extremely helpful. These can be mailed to the church, donated through the PayPal link on our website, or by arranging a direct debit through your financial institution. If you need assistance in arranging giving, please feel welcome to contact our church office. We give thanks for you and the outpouring of grace and compassion being shared. So this week's spiritual practice may be a bit uncomfortable. And if it makes you uncomfortable, that's okay. It's okay if you're not ready yet, but I'd like to invite you to listen, to be open for the Holy Spirit's musings and the idea that the work of justice, specifically the doing of justice through things like protesting and marching and letter writing and petition signing and engaging in the work of lifting systemic oppression is sacred and holy and part of what we're invited to do as followers of Jesus. The work of justice invites us to consider the things that make our heart break, the issues that bring tears to our eyes or draw breath from our lungs in gasps. Those reactions are sacred. Pay attention to them. That's the Holy Spirit pointing us toward a need. Sometimes it's our relationships that lead us to the places where we are called to do justice. Maybe we love someone who experiences oppression. Maybe we have a conversation and experience someone else's story or learn from someone else's words the depth of their pain. And that cultivated connection moves us. Pay attention to that. That is the Holy Spirit. 
The prayer of St. Francis is well known, and it may be more of a prayer of justice than many of us realize. It's a prayer for action, for inspiration, for strength to share the abundant love and radical hospitality of God. So may we together pray. May we pray for the marchers and the protesters, for the petition signers and the petition makers, for those who make peace and those who work to keep peace, for those who make the laws and for those who enforce them, for those who speak courageously to power against unjust practices, and for those who hear their pleas. May we pray for the oppressed and for the vulnerable, for those whose voices have been silenced for far too long, and for those who are making space to hand out megaphones and amplifiers to make their voices heard. Let's pray for wisdom and discernment from the Holy Spirit for leaders and for teachers and for anyone and everyone who makes decisions that impacts the lives of others. Let's pray for those who are facilitating acts of mercy and for those who are receiving them. And may we pray for open eyes and open ears and open minds and open hearts to recognize the things that break God's heart and demand our response and our action and our love and our hospitality. And so we pray the words of St. Francis, the prayers of St. Francis for ourselves. Lord, make me, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. As instruments of peace, For those who pray the words of St. Francis for ourselves, we also join our voices together to pray for the sake of the world, using the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A cheering, chanting, dizzy crowd had stripped the green trees bare. And hailing Christ as King aloud, waved branches in the air. They laid their garments in the road and spread his path with palms, and the vows of lasting love bestowed with royal hymns and psalms. When day dimmed down to deepening dark, the crowd began to fade, till only trampled leaves and bark were left from the parade. Lest we be fooled because our hearts have surged with passing praise, Remind us, God, as this week starts, where Christ has fixed his gaze. 
Instead of palms, a winding sheet will have to be unrolled. A carpet much more fit to greet the king a cross will hold. Before we journey further into Holy Week, I just want to remind you and extend an invitation to you to join us immediately following this first broadcast of our worship service on Zoom Fellowship. We're grateful for all of the blessings that the Zoom platform provides for us. It's a wonderful chance to see one another's faces, even if it is from behind screens, to hear one another's voices, and to share fellowship and prayer requests and just catch up with one another. There's no right or wrong way to experience this. You are welcome however you feel comfortable interacting with us. Know that it is a blessing when we are together, a blessing when we're able to catch up, and a blessing when we're able to know specifically how we can be holding one another in prayer in the coming weeks. So you're invited to join us. The link for the Zoom call was provided in the email you received this morning about the worship service as well as in the comments section just below our video. We look forward to sharing fellowship with you. And now, friends, as we make our way further into this holy week, as we make that journey with Jesus towards Passover, those sacred, sacred rituals, through the deep darkness of Good Friday, and as we prepare to celebrate the joy of the resurrection, may we take time to experience the sacred that is all around us. May we experience that beautifully cultivated connection that we have with our creator and that beautiful connection that we share with all of God's created people all around us. May you be blessed and may you be a blessing. May joy and nothing less find you and surround you wherever you may go. And may you be guided by our creator and redeemer and sustainer who loves you more desperately than you could ever imagine, who will never leave you and will always lead you safely home. Let us go together in peace, with joy, with God's abundant love and radical hospitality ready to share with all the world. Amen. Mm.